Well, hello there. So in this video, we're going to take a look at module 34. Let me actually move that just a little bit out of the way. Extra practice module 34. And this one's all about the Phillips curve, which is really important for our, our uh, doing well on the AP tests um, and on this unit exam. It's really the biggest new concept that we have to grapple with. So the first question for check your understanding says explain how the short run Phillips curve illustrates the negative relationship between the cyclical unemployment and the actual inflation rate for a given level of expected inflation rate. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What that really just means is that like you have inflation percent and unemployment percent and the short run Phillips, short run Phillips curve shows inverse relationship. Like that, that's literally what it shows is that there's an inverse relationship between um, kind of a cyclical level of unemployment, right? So like when you go from point A to point B on here, we know that there's a long run Phillips curve that exists at the natural rate of unemployment. So like the natural rate is just there regardless of what the inflation rate is. Um, but the, the cyclical kind of ups and downs, we can, we can go along the short run Phillips curve. Number two says, why is there uh, no long run trade-off between unemployment and inflation? And, and the short answer is, is because um, the natural rate of unemployment exists kind of regardless, regardless of current inflation or current price levels is a way to say that. So like no matter what, like you're going to have some natural level of unemployment of the structural and frictionally unemployed. And so um, that, that's going to happen no matter what the current level of, of inflation is. And so that's why that long run relationship doesn't hold. Uh, number three says, why is disinflation so costly for an economy? Are there ways to reduce these costs? Um, it's costly because it typically, well, it only, I mean, it, it does. It involves, involves reducing aggregate demand and, and that therefore drives up unemployment. And so usually there's that kind of the process of pushing down the inflation rate causes you to go from something like a very high inflation rate with low unemployment to point B, which is much lower unemployment or much lower inflation, um, but much higher unemployment. And so that that trade off exists. Are there ways to reduce the costs? I mean, you can you can do it around the edges, you know, in the sense of like you could provide unemployment benefits, right? UE benefits. But the problem is actually anything that you do to try to like help this is actually going to prevent you from disinflating. Um, so like, you know, you, you don't want to do too much because if you're actually trying to stimulate the economy at the same time you're contracting it, it's counterproductive. So um, yeah, but at the end of the game, like disinflation is really painful. Um, number four says, why won't anyone lend money at a negative nominal rate of interest? How can this pose problems for monetary policy? Um, because if the, the interest rate nominal is less than zero, we can say therefore fairly clearly the interest rate real is less than zero. Like it, it necessarily has to be. Um, and, and so you wouldn't lend if that was the case, right? There's no reason to. Um, this, is, this is problematic, problematic because most of, of most monetary policy tools, monetary tools like open market operations, you know, the reserve requirement, the discount rate, those all rely on banks lending money, um, rely on banks lending. And so if, if the interest rate, the nominal interest rate kind of has a floor below which it can't really go, like some, some central banks like the European Central Bank have explored um, like negative nominal interest rates, but it really kind of makes the system a little wonky. And and so the Fed has been very reticent to do that. Um, and, and the problem is then it limits the effectiveness of the monetary tools, because once you get to that floor, there's really no no reason for banks to lend money. So it really kind of throws off um, it throws off your ability to do monetary policy effectively. Let's take a look at these multiple choice questions. MC number one says the long run Phillips curve is um, it's not the same as the short run. It is vertical. Um, it is not the short run plus expect. I don't even know what what three means. It's not that's just a made up thing. So it's vertical. That's B two only. Uh, number two, the short run Phillips curve shows the inverse relationship between um, price levels or, or inflation and unemployment is really what it is. Um, 
And so negative relationship between unemployment and inflation C. Number three, an increase in expected inflation, right? So think about what are the shifters of IRAP? Remember, expected inflation is inflationary expectations. That's the I in SRAS. So we'd say if inflationary expectations go up, we know that that's going to cause workers to demand higher raises, and it's going to cause input costs to rise. So that drives SRAS down. And so we know that that causes the short run Phillips curve to shift the opposite direction. Remember, they go opposite each other. So, um, so if we've got, sorry, I'm just kind of making sure, if we've got the SRAS, I'm looking at my own arm, going to the left, and I'm doing it with my arm, so they flip for you, left, then the other one has to be going to the right. Um, so SRPC to the right or upward, um, and which one is that? That's um, 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 B. Okay, number four says bringing down inflation that's become embedded, that's disinflation E. It's just the definition. Um, number five, debt deflation. Um, and so th this one is not, this one's not going to appear on the quiz. So I'm just going to say, nah, don't worry about that one. All right. Let's take a look at free response number two. And let's scroll down here. It says, consider the, whoa, whoa, look at that diagram. Look at all those, look at all those. There's like four different lines on that thing. Um, what is the nominal interest rate if expected inflation is zero? Okay. If expected inflation is zero, man, this is, okay, supply at zero, it's demand at zero of loanable, this is loanable funds, but it should be the real interest rate. Um, okay, I think I'm reading this correctly. It's taking me a second here. If the expected inflation is zero, the nominal interest rate is four. I'm just reading like it's it's the graph, let me kind of point here, S zero, D zero. So that occurs at E zero, so four. This is whack. Four percent. I'm so excited about this problem. It's so different. Um, what were the? What would be the non nominal interest rate if the expected inflation rate were negative two? Um, less the. I mean, you you know you can see here that like D10, S10 are higher, and it looks like they just add the 10 percent there. So, so it would be um, two percent, two percent, because each percent of price level percent um, causes percent change in interest rate. So what they're, what they're effectively doing is like every time the inflation rate goes up a percent, then the nominal interest rate goes up a percent because the lenders are basically adjusting for nominal interest rates. That's what this diagram is actually telling us. It's a, it's a very strange diagram um, because normally the real interest rate is on that axis. Um, so it's just two. C says, what would the nominal interest rate be if the expected inflation rate, did I even do that? Okay, negative two, so negative six. So it would actually be negative two. So C is negative 2%. And it's the same reasoning um, because you're going from like four. So like, if you really want to know how I'm doing it, 4% interest rate nominal at 0% inflation. And so it says if the expected inflation is negative six, then this one has to be negative 2%. If that maybe me writing this out helps make sense of where, where it's going on here. Um, D, how, what would a negative nominal interest rate mean for lenders? How much lending would take place? Um, lenders would say this is bogus. Lenders wouldn't lend. And then E, um, because they wouldn't make any money. What effect does a nominal interest rate of zero have on monetary policy? Um, it's, it's, it makes it less effective, makes it ineffective. So this is not at all the type of free response you'll see on an exam because it's, it's weird. Um, but certainly sussing out these interest rates is something you might be able to do on a test because really it's just relating like that they want to keep the real interest rate constant. And that, that's a, pretty common test question um, is kind of the lenders, if they expected inflation changes, they just want to keep the real interest rate the same. So they just adjust the nominal for every price level change. All right. Hopefully that helped you. Uh, I'll see you next time.